Hi, I'm Nisha. I'm mom to 14 and I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about food. So I've gone to different stores and such and you know showed you what we're buying and all those types of things. Today we're going to go over why we're buying what we're buying, why we're doing it different, why I really started to do more YouTube um, and show you some things that we're making. At the end of the video we'll kind of go over some meals that I prepped with some hamburger that I have sitting right here and we'll talk about that. So first off, we ch we decided to homestead years ago. We had a son um, who just passed away in February, and he had a condition that was Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. I'm not going to go too much into that, um, but there was a point in his life that he got sick and he was in the hospital. And when he was in the hospital, um, he had an antibiotic resistance. And I didn't know what that was, but I looked it up. And so the antibiotics that they were trying to give him, they were not able to give him because he had too many antibiotics already in his body. And I was like, how does he have antibiotics in his body? He hasn't been sick. He hasn't had an antibiotic. And I was all confused. Um, and I looked it up and there is antibiotics in some of our foods. And so we started at that point to really focus on raising our own meat and buying, if we had to buy any, buying organic meat because it doesn't have any of the hormones, it doesn't have any of the antibiotics. Sometimes things are labeled, um, no antibiotics, and you know it really gets fishy on how many days beforehand that they can give antibiotics, that they need antibiotics. I am not opposed to giving a sick animal antibiotics. We have animals here, and we have had to, in the past, give animals um, antibiotics for their health. We do not eat the animal or drink the animal's milk during that time period. But I am okay with if an animal is sick and natural remedies have not worked to give an animal those types of things. But that is not how antibiotics and hormones are used in the commercial farming industry. Um, so we started doing that and we started getting, you know, trying to do some things healthier, like realizing what a GMO is and um, researching that. And then really like, what do I want to feed my children? Do I want to feed them, you know, fruits and vegetables that have been sprayed with pesticides? No, I really don't want to. So we started eating healthier years ago. Um, and okay. since then we try to eat we've tried to eat healthier. Now, life is life and, you know, kids get ice cream cones sometimes when we go out or um, whatever might happen. We did eat a lot of um, homemade bread as well. Um, I made bread from spelt berries and we ate a lot of homemade bread and um, bread products. We didn't like eliminate sugars or anything like that. So fast forward a little bit, my son passed away in February and we had um, a child in our house that was going through some issues and I was not going to allow um, somebody just to write off my child because I felt like there was some neglect that happened with the healthcare industry in regards to my son's death. So I really was firm and said, we need to get this checked out and we're going to address this issue. So when we did address this issue, we found out that this person had um, huge amounts of inflammation in their body. And they also, um, while we were finding things out, they had some autoimmune conditions and such. Um, we also found out lots of information about inflammation in your body and how inflammation can be the cause of um, autoimmune diseases. It can be the cause of um, like different things. Inflammation in the brain, like ADHD could be inflammation of the brain. Um, there's a lot of information out there. So I suggest that you do your own research. Um, for our household and our family, we had a bunch of issues that were going on. Um, eczema, ADHD, um, these autoimmune conditions um, that were all going on. And we decided we need to keep, take control of this. At the same time, I was pregnant and I was going to a chiropractor to get our little one flipped around, which worked wonderfully. And thank you to the chiropractor. And so we went to him and he said, um, 
try to take gluten, soy, completely out of your diet and um, to eliminate dairy because dairy is a huge inflammation thing as well. Um, he did say if we were doing raw dairy that that would be okay. We're just doing it like on occasion. Sorry, the flies going around my head. Um, so at that point, I started looking into diets that were like that. And we decided to go with basically it's a paleo diet, diet um, except for the fact that she was said that she could have um, rice and beans. So she's allowed to have rice and beans and occasional um, sugar, but most of what we use is maple syrup and honey. So what we did was we completely overhauled our diet. We've been doing this for a couple months, but it has been hard. And one of the big things that has been really hard with is that every time we look up information, it's these small little portions for, you know, one person who wants to go paleo and one person who wants to go paleo is not the same as trying to feed 14 people on a daily basis, a paleo sort of based diet. And it's expensive and it's hard and I still have a budget. It's, you know, we've increased our budget, but it's not like my budget went away completely. I still needed to take care of my family. And I feel like that's um, how I honor God in one way is taking care of my family through our like food preparation and being resourceful with our money. Okay. So all that has gone on and we've tried to figure things out over the past couple months and things are going well. And so I'm going to try to just show you a couple things that I have done today. So when I'm doing my grocery hauls and when I'm doing um, other things, um, keep in mind that a lot of times when you see, you know, cheap meals, you'll see people that are using lots of gluten type products. Um, it's hard. I mean, we're taking away all gluten as well as soy. Next time you're in the grocery store, look at your mayonnaise, look at your salad dressings, look at almost anything, any candies, they all have soy in them. So we're taking all the soy out. Um, like I said, occasional sugar, um, she's okay with, um, but mainly we're using maple syrup and we're using honey. So that's kind of just an overview of like what we're doing. And I'm just going to jump into what I have prepared now so that um, you'll be able to look and see what we're doing and kind of like cost base and, and those types of things. Basically, my goal is, is to spend roughly $100 to $120 per person per month for our groceries. Um, it really just depends on the month and it depends if we have meat and that is only it's a hundred dollars per person per month But that is not including any of our animal feed. That is just what I purchase at the grocery store. We live um, On the Canadian border. So our prices can be fairly high because we're right there on the Canadian border um, so Let me show you. Yeah Okay, so the other day I bought, because I ran out of beef, we usually we grow our own and we will be butchering fairly soon. We butchered a pig the other day. Um, so I have this, I bought, let's see, three, six, 12 pounds of ground burger and that's what you will see here. So in this right here, there's three pounds of burger. I mix three pounds of burger with a onion and pepper from the garden and then I mixed in two jars after that was cooked I mixed in two jars of salsa and about a quarter cup of taco seasoning and that is what we got here you can see all the tidbits in there and it's nice and creamy um this will be served inside of cassava remember I got all that cassava flour the other day this will be served inside of homemade cassava flour tortillas and we will have lettuce and avocados in, their tor in the tortillas as well. I'm going to serve that with um, cucumbers from the garden and canned applesauce that we canned. Okay, so then this right here is only partially done. 
because I want you to see the bottom. So this has uh, this has three pounds of hamburger as well, and it has onions and peppers, and then salt and pepper, and then it has um, peas. The peas are from the garden. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plop some of these in here. Um, these are the sweet potatoes, and I took some coconut oil. And <clears throat> with the um, I melted coconut oil in a pan, and I added, I had taken some garlic scapes and put those in the freezer. So I added some garlic scapes, and then I added some, I took the tops of the onions, because we were planting, we had planted onions. I took the tops of the onions, and I had um, cut those all up, and then put those in with some oil, and put them in the freezer. And so I took like cubes of that and put that into the oil and I added it to these sweet potatoes after I kind of just mashed them up a little bit or my daughter actually mashed them up. So I am just taking this here and as you can see, there's not a whole lot here. I'm going to take and make a layer of this here and then for us, it depends on what paleo you are. Um, some paleo people do not eat white potatoes. Some do. You could do all. Um, you could do all sweet potatoes in here. I'm going to do a layer of po sweet potatoes, like I just did there. And I have actually potatoes on the stove now cooking. So I'm going to put a layer of regular potatoes, and that will come right up to the brim here. And we'll just pack all those potatoes in. And that would be one full meal for our whole family, plus probably a lunch for part of our family. And then I have here just some meatloafs. So we have four meatloafs. So what I did to stretch this out a little bit was I took six pounds of hamburger and with the six pounds of hamburger, I added some peppers, a, a couple, um, it was actually a few small ones from the garden, and two onions. And then I added um, two sweet potatoes chunked up, and I grated some carrots and put those in there. And then I had some leftover barbecue sauce in the um, fridge. And so I put that in there, and I put, instead of ketchup... And then I put three eggs and maybe a cup of, I took oatmeal and I just ground that up in the food processor and I put that in there. And these will be great. We'll eat two with a meal and then have the other two for another meal. So we'd have one meal, two meal, three, four, I'll say two for this because I could make this with a bigger side for another day and then it would be two full meals. So two, three... And then this will actually be two meals as well, because right now in the Instapot, I have a um, Instapot full of refried beans. So we'll have um, the refried beans with that as well. So we'll kind of like smear the refried beans onto the cassava tortillas and then put this in it with the lettuce and avocados. And then that will be a good meal. So those are some things that I do or have done that have worked really well for our family. I hope these recipe ideas help you and let me know below if you are um, restricted in your diet and how you've managed to, you know. Over so here I just wrote down like the numbers of what everything was. So it's the total um, here I have like the total, the hamburger, how much it costs and how much each meal costs. So this is what was in the meal and then the breakdown of the meal, what's in this meal here, and then the breakdown here and here and here. So we'll go over it real quick. The meal that was like the taco meal, um, that's going to be two meals. So we used three pounds of meat. Um, onions, peppers, salsa, beans, cassava flour, seasonings and oil, lettuce and avocado. We also serve that with cucumbers and applesauce. And so um, the total for that meal for our family was $27.32. 
if I cut that in half, that's $13.66 per meal or 70, uh, sorry, 97 cents per person per per meal, like per serving. Okay, so then the shepherd's pie, we had the sweet potatoes, the potatoes, the peas, the onions. I'll serve that again. I'll serve that one with applesauce as well. Um, so the shepherd's pie is twenty-seven thirty-two for two meals, so thirteen sixty-six per person, and ninety-seven cents per person per per serving. Um, <clears throat> this last one here is the meatloaf, which is a little more expensive. We would serve that with baked potatoes and corn that we got from the garden that I had um for that I had just frozen. So sweet potatoes, carrots, onions, peppers, eggs, and barbecue sauce is what is in the actual mixture to the meatloaf. So the meatloaf with the baked potatoes and the corn from the garden would be $52.14. And so per meal would be $26.07. That's $1.86 per person per meal. We will have a little bit extra of the meatloaf, most likely. Um, though we'll probably be enough for my husband to have like two more lunches. I would put that in like some gluten-free bread and then he could just have a meatloaf sandwich to go with his lunch. He'd probably have like two meatloaf sandwiches and it would be two days worth of meatloaf sandwiches that we would have left over. So <clears throat> it is a little bit higher, but I think they're all like within an affordable budget. So I hope this really helps you. Have a blessed day. Bye.